couple of weeks ago, I asked for your dumb resolve questions. And now I have a whole list of topics to go over that actually aren't dumb questions. They're common things, common misconceptions and stuff. Here's one of those. This question comes from Weekend with Burn. It says, good day, Casey. Often when I'm in Fusion, I'll think I'm done, so I'll check out my work on the edit page. Further tweaks are sometimes required, but when I go back to Fusion, I don't seem to be able to find the nodes and structure I was working on. I'm sure there's an easier, obvious way to do this. Thanks. Keep creating. Keep sharing. Cheers. Okay, because of the nature of the internet, I feel like you might mean one of two things, so I'm just going to answer them both. Basically, the idea here is you have this Fusion comp and you're like, oh, actually, I want this background to be red. So you switch back to Fusion and maybe you change this background to red. You would expect if you go to edit page that it turns it red, right? But what can also happen is let's say you have this comp here in your edit page and you go, yeah, I actually want that background red. So you go back to your Fusion comp, double clicking it in the media pool, take your background turn it red, switch back over to the edit page, and it's still blue. Like, did I not, what's happening? Why didn't, what is that? The reason for that is because of how Fusion treats a Fusion comp in the media pool versus in the timeline. You can think of it like this. A Fusion comp in the media pool is sort of like your master kind of source composition, right? It's like your starting point or your template. As soon as you drag it into the edit page in the timeline, it makes a new version of that. So this comp no longer lives here in the media pool. It's sort of its own thing that lives in the timeline. So because I adjusted this red background in this comp in the media pool, once I drag that from the media pool into the timeline, it has a red background because that's what the source comp had. But that's really the only time that this clip references this fusion comp. It makes a whole brand new Fusion Comp that lives in the timeline now. So if I want to adjust something with this specific clip in the timeline, I have to be over it here in the edit page and then switch over to the Fusion page. And now I can grab this background and adjust the colors, switch back to the edit page and the colors are adjusted. That doesn't adjust my colors in my original comp, even though you might think that it would. And I certainly would think that if you adjust this comp, that it would kind of ripple down to everything else, but that's just not really how it works. It's sort of making a copy. One thing that you can do if you want to adjust uh, sort of your template is you adjust it here in the media pool and then drag a new version down, right? One sort of workaround that you can do is if you have this comp in your edit page and let's say this shows up several times in your timeline, you can right click on this and say new compound clip. And what that will do is make a compound clip just from that fusion comp that, you know, you can alt drag and make multiple different versions of throughout your timeline, right? And if I want to adjust all of these together, I can right click on any of these compound clips and say open in timeline. And now inside of this kind of nested timeline, we have our fusion comp and I can go to fusion and I can change my background. We'll make it green. And then if I go back to the edit page, it changes it here in this timeline. But remember this timeline is for a compound clip, which exists multiple places in my timeline and everywhere that that compound clip shows up is green. So clips, including compound clips, as well as media act different between the media pool and the timeline. The timeline references those in real time. Whereas something like a fusion composition, it really only looks at it one time when the clip is made. So what you or maybe other people are running into here is when you're in your fusion comp, maybe you make all of these different things. I'll just add a bunch of random stuff, right? So that we can see what's going on. You have this whole node graph that you're building out. And then you're like, yeah, this is great. I also want this to exist in other places. So I'll grab this comp again and where, like what's happening? Why isn't it showing up? Well, that's because all the changes that you made just apply to this fusion clip, not the fusion comp living in the media pool and not in the other clips. So that can be one way to answer this question of <laughs> where are the nodes I was working with when I click into fusion that I can't find them. The other one might be the more simple version, which is if I want to change part of my comp, how do I find that? 
when I switch back to Fusion, I'm like just kind of thrown in here and there's this whole node tree and I don't know what to do. Well, part of that is how you organize your node tree. It can take a few minutes to look at this node flow down here and figure out what's going on, especially if you weren't the person who built it. But what helps is coloring things, labeling things, and laying things out in a way that is really organized, right? So here I have my background, and by looking at anything that's over this underlay, say in my first viewer, I can kind of engineer this and figure out what I was doing here. So I start with a red background, and then I add this kind of darker section on the bottom. I can bring up this other background. This looks like a black background that is blended over the red background. So if I want to change the background color, here's the background node, and I can change the color there, and that will change my master background. So being able to figure out which node to tweak after you've been working, it's pretty important. I, I would say it's even an art to make node trees that make sense and that are easy for you to come back to later and easy for other people to understand what's going on. Big, big thing is using these underlays, using colors, labeling things. Even here, I didn't label things super well. What is this media in one? I'd have to bring this up. Okay, this is our texture for our box. So I can rename this dog box texture. And I like to put a underscore and then a couple letters at the end to tell myself what kind of node this is, because once you rename it, it deletes the default name for the node. And so if I say MI, I know that's media in. I'll hit OK. Now this is dogbox texture.mi, and I know this is the dogbox texture and it's a media in just by looking at it. So part of that is getting used to how Fusion works, and part of it is staying organized, renaming things as you go. Another thing that's really cool is if you do have these underlays, like let's say you have a huge, huge, like this is just a medium sized node tree or whatever, but let's say you have a big node tree and you have like 10 of these underlays. Well, you can go to these three dots right here to this menu and it will automatically add a bookmark to any underlay that you've added. So I can switch to the lights underlay and it will scroll all the way to that underlay and show me the lights. And I can just go to the background, just go to the box art and that will kind of bring that up. So that's a nice way to make sure you always know kind of where to tweak things. You can also just bookmark a view if you zoom in here, like to this FBX, and I don't want to add an underlay, I can go to this menu and say add bookmark. You can also say control D and we'll call this FBX. And now if I scroll far away or whatever, I can go to this as a bookmark as well, FBX, and that will zoom me back in to view this FBX. So hope that's helpful for getting organized with your notes. So I hope that's helpful kind of outlining the difference between the timeline and the media pool thing and the fusion and all of that stuff. It, this kind of stuff can kind of get confusing, you know, and that's OK. That's all right. You can take this one bit at a time, one bite at a time, the same way you eat an elephant ear. Salesman.